Hello everybody, welcome back to the Advanced Vape channel. Uh, today we're going to do the first episode in a series of episodes about building a DNA 250 color. Um, before I even get started, I'm going to say a couple huge disclaimers about this. First of all, uh, I'm not an expert in soldering. I'm totally self-taught in doing all of this kind of stuff. So there may be some stuff that I do that's not like technically the best practice or um, you know, not what you would do if you were taught uh, how to solder at a school or something like that. So uh, I've done this successfully for quite a few mods, but I just want to say I'm, I'm not a professional at doing this. Uh, the next thing is if you do this yourself, um, there is some danger there, especially using LiPo batteries. If you mess up or something, it can cause a fire. Obviously, uh, soldering irons are extremely hot, so you can burn yourself and cause a fire with that too. So, uh, just a general disclaimer that this isn't the safest thing to do, and uh, that I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, so with those disclaimers out of the way, um, I'll talk a little bit about getting started, the first things that you absolutely have to have, and then what specifically I'm doing with this build. So obviously you need a soldering iron. I'm using one with a really fine tip. Uh, it makes it a lot easier. I'm using lead-free solder. Uh, the melting temperature is a little bit higher, which makes it a little bit harder to work with, but it seems to hold up uh, longer than leaded solder. So uh, harder to use, but it lasts longer from my experience. Um, next up, I have one of these. Uh, I got it at Harbor Freight for like five or ten dollars or something. Uh, this really comes in handy to hold stuff for you while you're soldering it. It just holds things in place uh, so you can get the right angle and you're not trying to hold it and it gets really hot and all of that crap. Uh, next you need flux. Uh, I got this at Home Depot. I think this came from Home Depot also. They came in a pack. Uh, wire strippers, gotta have these. Uh, the main wire that I'm going to be using is this, uh, 16 gauge. Uh, and this is super flexible, they call it flex wire. Um, it is just like hundreds of little tiny strands in there. Uh, and you'll be able to see it better if I strip some. If you can see, it's just hundreds of little tiny strands in there. Uh, and that makes this wire super flexible. Makes it much easier to build with. Uh, and that's opposed to um, the generic kind of stuff that they have at Home Depot. So this is the same 16 gauge size um, that they sell at Home Depot, but it's uh, stranded. So there's just a few copper wires in there and it's much harder. It doesn't bend as well, particularly once it has solder on it. So this is terrible. You don't want to use this. I think my first mod had this in there. Okay, next uh, you need these if you're using a LiPo battery and you're not hardwiring it. So I like to um, be able to plug the battery in and unplug it if I want to change batteries. So this is just a big pack of... Uh, connectors. This is an XT60 connector, which is what LiPos use. Uh, here's the male half and the female half. I'm only really going to be using these because the battery already has one of these on there. But uh, it plugs in like that. You solder the back side. And these particular ones that I bought come with a little guard on the back, which I like. Uh, it ends up being more durable than um, heat shrink on the back side, but heat shrink is fine if you want to do that too. Uh, might actually end up doing both. And that's the, the general uh, gear that you need to do it, but specifically for what we're doing, obviously you're going to need an enclosure. 
Uh, this is an Alpine Tech NXL box, and I've never uh, built a mod with this box before, so I might have a little bit of trouble. Um, shouldn't be a huge deal. This is how it comes. Um, the holes are already drilled, which makes it much easier. It makes it much cleaner looking. It has slots ready for the batteries that are that come included when you buy this. Sorry, not the batteries, the magnets. Uh, little slots here and here for the magnets, and I'll get to that at the end of the build. Uh, Pre-drilled out for a 16 millimeter button, 22 millimeter already recessed 510, and the screen, three buttons, and the micro USB. Uh, you also need a 510. This is a Veritube V2. It says V2 on the back there. And I'll go. I they accidentally sent me a V1 when I ordered this one. I I generally buy two 510s and two buttons at once. Um, they sent me a V1, so I'll go grab that real quick and show you what that looks like. Uh, this is the V1 Veritube. As you can see, it doesn't say V2 on it. Uh, the backside design is quite a bit different. Uh, this is closer to uh, Fat Daddy Vapes 510 design. Uh, this whole section unscrews. That's insulator threaded into metal there. Uh, it, this unscrews and then comes apart further for you to solder the positive pin directly. Um, I really don't like this design. I don't like Fat Daddy Vapes 510s um, for that reason also. They're just harder to use, and I, I just don't like them. So I'm not going to be using this. Uh, this design is much easier, a lot easier to solder, and I haven't had any problems with them. Uh, sometimes they'll go out um, just in normal wear and tear, but the, I mean that's months and months later of use, and they're easy to change, so not a big deal there. Uh, you need a button. This is a 16 millimeter dome top button. Uh, this kind has screws in the back, um, but there's lots of kinds that are much shorter that are uh, they require you to solder the wire on. Um, either one is fine. As far as space goes, the ones that you have to solder, they're much, much smaller. They go out to about here. So if space is a concern on your build, then this is not the kind that you would want to get. Um, this might end up causing problems later. Uh, we'll have to take a look just because it's so long. Uh, these are dome top buttons that I got. Uh, the, I'm not going to be using the bigger one because we have a 16 millimeter switch. Uh, but I'm using this. This is up, down, and select for uh, these holes here. Uh, battery. This is a four cell LiPo battery. 2345C, which should be plenty. Uh, this is a big battery. I tried to get as big a battery as I could fit in this case, but this battery size might end up causing me problems later. Uh, I'll show kind of the next step is to do a mock up of all these parts before you actually start, so start soldering. Excuse me. So we'll see what that looks like. I, I just did it a few minutes ago and it, it's very close. So I might end up not being able to use this. And I think the final thing that you need besides the chip itself uh, is a 3D printed chip sled. Uh, this is what the DNA chip will sit on and be screwed into. Uh, and this is not going to be used until the very end because you do not want to solder while this is attached on there because this will melt. And of course you need uh, the chip itself. This is a DNA 250 color. Here's the screen. The chip itself. and the balancing little chip that goes in there for this section of the battery.
so that it can uh, balance these cells. Okay, so the next step is to kind of do a rough mock-up of all of the parts, put them in the mod, and see if uh, you have room and everything uh, layout-wise looks okay. So start with the 510. And then the button. I got one more disclaimer for you guys while I'm fighting with this. This is going to be extremely difficult for me to do on camera. I normally have a magnification little, a little headset that I wear with a magnifier so that I can see what I'm doing. And uh, filming with this camera setup, I'm, I'm leaned way forward. So it's, it's hard for me to see what I'm doing. So that, that may cause problems later on when it comes to the little fine soldering that I have to do. I'm just going to temporarily seat this on here and set it in there. Okay, so there's a rough mock-up. As you can see, that battery just barely fits in there. And then once this is connected, it's going to be extremely tight if it will fit in there at all. Uh, once that's in the connector, it would be about there. So uh, extremely tight. It looks like the 510 still has free movement which is something you want to make sure that this can go up and down. It looks like it can still go up and down, but that's very, very tight in there. And connecting the actual battery connection there is going to be very difficult. So I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to use this battery, but I'm going to try. Uh, I have a smaller battery that we can try and get to work in here. Uh, this is a, a big case, but there's not a whole lot this in this direction, so um, it's going to be difficult. As far as the switch, I'm going to have to run the wires underneath it to get to the 510, so I'm going to have to make a U-shape with the uh, positive wire to the 510 to go underneath there and then kind of sit sideways on that to make this work. This large thing there. So everything else looks okay. The only thing I'm really worried about is the battery. Um, I may have to go with a smaller width-wise battery, but I will see and I'll try and get this to work. Um, worst case scenario, I could hardwire this connection to the to the mod uh, and that would probably work but um, that's kind of a problem for another day now that you've done a kind of rough layout you can actually get started and I always start with the chip itself um, we're going to do that in the next video probably uh, we're going to solder these pads and attach that little white connector onto here and just generally get uh, this chip ready to attach to all of these other parts. So I think that brings this kind of intro video to the end. Um, if anybody has any interest in what I'm doing, let me know and I'll keep going. Otherwise, I'll just kind of build it off camera and show you what it looks like when it's done. Um, also, uh, let me know if you have any questions or if I was unclear about anything.